Good morning, ladies. How are you? Welcome to this week's episode of Elevate Your Business. We are going to chat about how you actually enjoy the holiday season being a solo printer. It is coming up so close to Christmas and to when people start to really switch off and shut down. And how can you set yourself up so that you can enjoy, enjoy time with your family, enjoy time doing whatever you want and that your business doesn't suffer in the process? Because we do get to have both ends. We don't have to have either or, which is something I've really learned over the last year is that we don't have to sacrifice one thing so that we can have another. So for those of you that are new, hi, I'm Joanne O'Halloran. I'm a business success coach and I show female coaches and holistic therapists how to generate consistent clients. And if there's anything I've learned in business over the last three years is that you need clients (laughs) to be able to have a successful business. And there's very easy ways to actually be able to bring in new clients. It doesn't feel salesy, doesn't feel yucky, but also gives you a platform So that you can have a long term business, that you can have a profitable business and you don't have to be struggling. We all want that, right? Okay, so let's dive into today and talk about how you can actually create space and time for yourself as a solopreneur. So I'm going to break down just some really simple tips for you to be able to do and you get to take them and apply them specifically to how you want um like December to look like for you what's important for you what your priorities are um and how much you want to be involved in your business or you don't and it's funny I had this conversation with, my, with one of my clients last week actually and um she's a psychotherapist and she was trying to figure out whether or not she would take clients over Christmas it's her first year in business so it's her first Christmas in business and it hadn't occurred to her that she didn't have to right she could actually take time off it just hadn't occurred to her so We're going to break it down and then you get to have a look at how you're going to apply this to your business. So the first thing that I want you to do is think about, okay, what what right now does your business setup look like in terms of sales, in terms of automations, in terms of um, what your plan is for Christmas? Like when you think about December, are you in a, oh shit, I have to make money now? Or are you able to reset and focus for January? Now, I asked that for two reasons. The first one's being, if you're in an, oh, shit, I have to make money now, you're more likely to put yourself into a position where you're going to work yourself, not enjoy December and actually get very, very frustrated and January is going to be crap for you. Um, so it's really important to be aware of that. Um, the same way if you're focused on January, is that something that you're doing because you think you have to? Or are you doing it because you've given yourself breathing space that you can do that in December? A lot of people think that... Um, like say particularly for online businesses so like for what I do for coaching or um you know something that's not product based or service based that people will buy for Christmas a lot of solopreneurs assume that people won't purchase and that's just not true there's certain times of the year that are peak for selling 100 percent that that's that's a given right the the buyer market and trends would tell us that but for industries like ours people are still buying right up until the 15th of December So just know that, right? Um, So you get to decide what way your business is looking right now and what you're choosing your focus to be. Then what you get to do is actually have a look and go, okay, what are my priorities in December? Because this is where people burn out. And for those of you that are mums, right, with small kitties, what are your priorities? Like if I think about when Leah was small, Leah's obviously an adult now and she's having her own baby. But like if I think when Leah was small, what did I really want I wanted to be able to bring her to all the fun stuff like in December so I wanted to be able to bring her to like nativity plays I wanted to bring her to um see Santa I wanted to bring her to I wanted to give her those Christmas experiences and I didn't want to be distracted by other things when they were on now for me at that time I didn't give myself enough space to be able to do that but also I didn't think about what I was prioritizing I also wanted to be able to like just sit with her in the evening times and like she loves having hot chocolate, like just to have hot chocolate and, you know, just have space with her. Um, But I didn't always allow myself to do that because I was in my corporate job at the time. If I was to do it again now, I absolutely would make space. So think about what are your priorities and what do you have that is going to be coming up in December? So because the one thing I've, I've seen time and time again is people put their business before their life. But you've got to be able to create your life first and put your business around it. So now is a beautiful opportunity to do that. What is super important for you in December? But I mean, hugely important. So like for Amelia's birthday is the 21st of December. That's a non-negotiable. 
even when I was in the corporate world, there was a non-negotiable, right? Leah's birthday is a non-negotiable. I, I, I will not work on that day. I am choosing to, um, I won't work after the 15th of December. I will be off for whatever the three week period is because that's what I'm choosing. I want, so the 21st December for me was always a non-negotiable Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas day. We have Stevens's day here in Ireland. I know not everybody has that, but we do. In the UK, you've got Boxing Day. Um, and then that period in between Christmas, I want to be able to spend with my family because I want to be able to go around and see people. And obviously Robert, for me, um, doesn't live close to me. So we get to make time for each other. And then New Year's. And then the week after Christmas, I love to be able to go do stuff. So myself and Robert are going away that week. Now, what is priority for you? What's important for you? what you get to think about and map it into your calendar, like actually physically put them into your diary now. Like, do you have events with the kiddies coming up? Do they have school plays? Do they have um, like play dates? Are you gonna go visit family or family gonna come visit you and block it out so that you can actually see right now, what does your December look like? Most people don't do that. They just wing it and then hope for the best and then get stressed out and massively overwhelmed. And it's just a shitty place to be in, to be honest. So don't do that to yourself, plan it out. So I already know what my December looks like. There's very little work on. I have one masterclass. I have my own leadership. So as in where I'm on, on the receiving end of coaching. And then I have my own coaching calls. Like as in I've got my clients. They're the same, right? They don't change every month. And then um, my own coaching calls. So I can see where they are, but I have massive gaps in between where I get to just be because all my content is done. All my copy is done. My plan for 2023 is done. It's done. There's nothing else for me to do. So I get to relax for December. Now, if you haven't done that, today is the day that you get to do it. The biggest mistake that I see people making is not planning and then getting frustrated. And when you don't plan, you're setting yourself up to fail. But also when you plan, make sure that you follow your plan. So be very clear on what you want your December to look like. Now, let's go back to those of you that are going into sales mode, right? Or you're going to be selling. So you've got a products-based business. It's natural that you're going to be selling in December. What automations do you have in place so that you don't have to be on all the time? What is your cutoff point? So are your orders automated? <laughs> have you got yourself set up that orders can automatically go in and out without you needing to be there? Do you have people around that you can ask for support if you physically have to pack stuff yourself? Um, that it's not automated. So say with network marketers, a lot of you will have it that um, people can, or they don't even have to order directly from you, that they will have a link that they order and then you just claim the commission that way. If you don't have it set up like that, how can you set it up like that? Um, from a packing point of view, right? So for those of you that are, are solopreneurs and um, you have your own products-based business, who can you rope in for support? Who has spare time right now that you can get in? Or do you need to put, like, put your hand into your pocket and reach out and get somebody in temporarily to help you? Like, is there students around that could come in and help you so that you can actually still have your headspace? Like, remember, we don't want to ever operate from a scarcity mindset, but we do want to be in completion, right? And we still want to be able to have time to enjoy stuff. And like, I remember when I was in the corporate world, I used to get sick all the time at Christmas because I didn't stop in the lead up to it. I worked in retail for years. Now, I didn't actually work in the stores, but it was still so bloody busy because I'd drive around to the mall and like I'd be working quite long hours and then trying to do everything with Leah as well. It just, you burn out, like you can't not burn out. So I got sick. So make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position to do that. What decisions can you make today that will have you be able to enjoy Christmas and not burn out? The really important decisions to make. And then when you're looking at the time that you have off, how have you let your customers or clients know that you're going to be off during that time frame? How have you communicated that to them? So like, I'll give you an example for me, right? I will have emails that will start to go out um, from next week, right? Just, you know, in the lead up to it and how you close down for Christmas and all that, right? So they're already scheduled. But my calendar is completely blocked out. So nobody could book a call. Like nobody can physically book a call. My out of office will be on, on my emails. Now my emails sequences will still go out because they're already pre-planned -pre like they're done well into the middle of January but during that that three-week time period it's not possible for people to get in contact with me 
in terms of like say dms and things like that yes i will be in in and out of my social media but i have time blocked off to be able to do that so for you and for your business what is it going to look like during that period how are you like make these decisions now and i know that they can feel tough right I, i do know that and i know that you feel like you know, if you're not present with, you know, on social media or with your clients or your customers all the time, things are going to fall apart. They're not. And if you want to have a scalable business and a business that will, you can see into the long term, these are the decisions that, that you have to make. Because like, I even know this from when I was in the corporate world, the more available you make yourself to people, the more people will pull and pull and pull. And then you'll resent, you'll resent everything that you're doing. So you want this to be sustainable, right? So make the difficult decisions now, particularly if they feel difficult, make them now. So how are you going to respond in that time frame? Are you, do you need to time block like I'm doing, right? So do you need to time block? So I will not respond to DMs on Leah's birthday, on Chris, like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, Stephen's Day, not a hope. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, forget about it. Just won't happen. Um, so I already know that I've made that decision. I'm not worried about it at all because I don't operate in like a life or death situation where somebody absolutely has to have a response there and then so yours is the same if you have a product-based business and you are still like you sell constantly so every day is a sales day for you do you are you able to declare that there's two days where um like you can set up automated emails for it to say that look you know um thank you for your order we it will be processed in the next X amount of time so that people are under no illusion that it's happening immediately set yourself up so that you can have it you can enjoy yourself not feel guilty about it which I know a lot of people do so not feel guilty about it and actually enjoy your time there are very simple things that you can do but they feel super challenging and I know because I, I struggled with them so much at the start and I remember even last Christmas was the first time I took the three weeks off and I, I was itching like I was itching I was like itching with my phone I was but I had to keep putting it down and walking away because I was like but you know what it's it's a slippery slope right and you can very easily get into it but I've set myself up this year so that it's not it's not a situation it's just not a situation my beautiful virtual assistant Haley has has everything else set up so none of us need to worry about it it is completely done and don't be afraid to let things bleed either your business won't go bust it will not go bust okay um now, what I want you to also think about as well is when you think about January, are you going to be going into like a hardcore sales period for January? And if the answer is yes, rather than doing anything about it the week in between Christmas and New Year's, now I'm not saying promotion won't be happening then. I will have promotion happening then, but I won't physically be promoting it, if that makes sense. Um, what can you do now to set that up? Like we have a week now where you could actually put in the time and the efforts and then give yourself space to be able to breathe, right? And like these things sound like they're a lot, but they're not. It's a case of just blocking yourself off for like three to four hours and just getting it done. Like literally just getting it done. When I did my content the other day, I sat there for three hours and that was my content and my copy. So if you don't know what the difference is, the content is on social media. The copy is um, what goes onto my emails. So I did both in three hours, which was great. It was absolutely great. Now I will say, for me, that three hours was just writing them out. Obviously, I have a virtual assistant who schedules all that stuff for me. So before I had Haley, well, Katie used to do it too. But before, say before that, in between when I didn't have them, I would have a full day of just doing that. And then it's done for an entire month, six weeks, whatever you created for. You don't have to think about it. But if you're going to go into a sales period in January, what can you do right now to make that process easier in January? So if you're a coach, and you are going to be doing like a masterclass, a webinar, a challenge, um, a retreat, an intensive, a workshop in January, because most people do. Have you got your content ready? Have you got your copy ready? Have you got your, if you're in a Facebook group, is that set up? Do you have your design stuff ready? Do you have, um, like if you have a workbook, do you have your workbook ready? And if not, do them now. Do them right now so that that week in between December and January, you don't have to worry about it. You can actually breathe and relax and it's off. You're off. So you don't even have to worry about it because the more breathing space you can give yourself, believe me, your January will be so much better because you're going to be revived. 
you're going to feel good, you're going to be rested, you're going to be ready to really take off. So give yourself the space to be able to do that when you're on all the time. It's not a good place to be and you will find yourself burning out and you'll start to get really pissed off with your business. You don't want that, right? And your family will also get pissed off if you're not spending time with them too. So they are my top tips for you to be able to do. Let me know, <coughs> excuse me, in the comments below what ones you've done before, what's worked for you um, and what ones you're going to implement for this year. Talk to you soon.